Okay, what's up? So I'm going to show you the fastest ways that you can make your renders look better. So say you're working on something. This happens all the time to me where you're, you're working on a piece and you spend you know, a lot of time on it, maybe a few hours, and then you end up with complete trash and you, you're kind of stuck in this stage where it looks like garbage and you don't really know why. So this is the checklist of things that I always go through. It's like these five things that I try first before anything else. Number one, fix the lights in your scene. What I mean is the way you position your lights in the scene can have a, a huge impact on what the overall thing actually looks like. So let me show you an example. Here we are in this one right here. And my lighting setup is just a spotlight and nothing else. So this is all the light in the scene is coming from this one thing right here. So if I move this around, you can see just changing it a little bit like this completely can transform the way that the whole thing looks. So if I put a spot, uh, point light over here, change the color, it, it totally transforms the image and all you're doing is moving one object around. So that's the fastest way to work out if this is the problem or not, is just move the lighting around and try to find something that looks cooler. So a lot of the times you'll find that if you just find the correct position to put a light in, or, or a couple of lights, if you're using more than one light in your scene, just finding the correct position to put a couple of those lights in can have a huge effect on what the overall image looks like. Next thing is use volumetrics. So let me show you why this is so important. Now, in pretty much every single scene, not, not every single, like I'd say 90%, if not more, of the artworks that I do, I use like volumetric fog in the scene, even for scenes that aren't supposed to be foggy. Pretty much most things look better with a bit of haze and volumetrics, um, even if it doesn't necessarily make that much sense that it should be like foggy. So let me show you this. Here's an example. Um, so I rendered out this thing. I'd, I'll show you how to set this up in a second, but here, here it is with volumetrics enabled. This is the, um, I'll put up like the final edited thing on the screen, but this is just the straight out of Blender with no Photoshop. So this is what it looks like with volume turned on normally. And uh, here's what it looks like without it turned on. So it still looks kind of interesting. It's not terrible, but um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of scenes where just disabling the volume pretty much turns it into complete garbage. Sometimes I'll check at the end of finishing a piece where I'll, I'll just disable the volume just to see what it looks like. And it, it looks like a completely different image so let me show you how to set it up. What this is, I'll do this from scratch so you can see how to do this. If you hit add and choose cube and just scale up the cube so that it covers your whole thing. So something like this, I don't know, doesn't matter. So something like that will be fine. Create a new texture, delete this, grab a principled volume, put that into the volume into the volume uh, of the material output here. And then a good starting point for the density is usually like 0.01 is usually what I'll start with. You could change it to whatever you want, but that's usually a good starting point I find for most scenes. And then I like to turn up the anisotropy a little bit. So let's turn that, turn that up to like 0.7 or something. Um, and then I like to just take the color and make it all the way white. And I might lower this down a little bit. So let's go 0 0.005, so half of it. And that looks, I think that's about what I had before. Now it's kind of annoying to work with this because this is now blocking everything. So the way you deal with that is you just go to here, this tab, this orange square tab, scroll down to viewport display, open this up, change this to display as bounds. So now it's just going to, you just get like basically a wireframe of this and it's not in the way. Okay. I would recommend just naming this volume and there you go. That's it. Okay. Next tip, if you've added volume, you've moved the lights around, you found good lighting, and it still looks like garbage, the next thing I'll usually try is moving the camera around and finding um, a better angle to capture everything from. So the reason this is so important is because this is the only thing that people will see when you, when, like when you share the rendered image, when you share the final thing, the render, like the final artwork or the final video, the only thing that people will see is the view from your camera. They don't see like the full 3D file, they, they can't rotate around, they can't, all they can see is the view from the camera. So it's extremely important to get that nailed. Something I see all the time is that people are really good at the actual 3D part, 
there's people that are extre- like way better than me at texturing and modeling and like making a cool environment or a cool object or just a hard surface modeling or whatever, but they don't capture it in a nice way. And it just ends up ruining the whole image because it's this amazing thing that is extremely hard to create, but then the way they've captured it by putting the camera and moving the lights around just doesn't make it look good. So I think this is one of the most important things that you can focus on is just choosing a good camera angle uh, to capture everything from. Because like I said, this is the only thing that people are going to see. They're not going to see the backside of the model. So they're not going to see all the hard work that you put into whatever if, if it's not visible in the camera. So choose a, good, a nice camera angle. Let me show you an example. So you might not think that this is something that people would do, like choose a weird camera angle like this, but I see people do this kind of camera angle all the time and it just doesn't make any sense to me. So tell me, tell me right now which one looks better, this angle right here or this right here. To me, it, this one feels a lot more beginner and just something that you'd find on like the, it, it just doesn't look good, you know? It's just a weird, not nice thing to look at. Um, if you're not sure what kind of camera angle to choose, like if, if this is kind of confusing and, re, and you don't really know what does a good camera angle mean, what I'd suggest is a couple of things. One, go online somewhere where people are posting their artworks, go find your favorite artist and kind of analyze what kind of camera angle they've chosen. So think about a few things. Think about the height that the camera's at, like off the, off the ground, like how high is it off the ground? Think about the rotation. So is it like a crazy rotation like this or is it straight up and down? And then think about also the focal length. So how, how zoomed out is it? How zoomed in is it? Is it really, is it like a telephoto lens? Is it completely super zoomed in, like way close on the subjects, or is it zoomed way out and you can see this whole wide panoramic view of everything? And then also think about just, you know, the way that things are placed into this, into this 2D image and into this frame. Just think about like the proportions and the ratio that everything's kind of placed at and just copy what other people are doing. The more you practice that, the more you'll kind of figure out where, like why placing the camera at certain positions looks good and why it doesn't look good in other positions. Another thing you can do to get better at this is actually use an actual camera, go out in real life and take photos and try and get like nice looking photos. And what you'll find is that, so if you go out with an actual camera and you photograph things, I think that'll help a lot. You don't need uh, like a fancy DSLR, you, you don't need to spend any money. You probably already have a camera on your phone. You can use that. Um, and, and in fact, mo in most of my artworks, I use similar camera settings to what like to what your phone looks like anyways. Um, definitely suggest that. Take your phone, just go out, go wherever you want, just find any cool location, go downtown, go out in the forest, doesn't matter, and just try and get some good photos. And then you can take that skill and you can just translate it right into your 3D artwork because um, it's the same thing. You're, you know, the camera in here is the same thing as the, the any any other camera. It's got the same settings. Um, so if you get good with an actual camera, you come back in here, and then you'll realize that this Blender camera is like the ultimate camera, like the best camera that could ever possibly exist. Like you have unlimited f-stop control, unlimited focal length control, and you can also fly with it. So like if you took this and you made this into a real camera, this would be like literally the most amazing camera ever created ever. So if you get good with like a real camera and then bring that back into 3D, you'll be a lot better. Like you'll be a lot better at capturing things than if you, if you don't know what an actual camera is like, if that makes sense. And the last tip is bring your renders into Photoshop. I do this with every single render that I do. Um, so what I was showing you here was uh, these are not edited in Photoshop, so I'll just put up the the actual like here's before, and then I'll, I'll put up the after uh, like edited in Photoshop. If you don't know how to use Photoshop, I made a video on that, so I'll just link that here. Go watch that. It, it's a really nice way to get your render to look less rendery and more like it's an actual place. Um, it also just you can really just bring out the colors, bring out the contrast, add clarity, just enhance the overall look so much uh, that you can't really do in 3D. Um, so yeah, like I said, like any time that I'm working on something and I, I just, it looks bad and I don't know why, this is the checklist that I go through. Um, and usually if I fix all of these things, it looks a lot better. Yeah, next time you're struggling with a, an artwork or struggling with an animation or whatever, come back to this video, look at my list of 
stuff here and try one of these, try one or all of these things. And then if you go through all these things and you try your best to optimize each section, your final result will be much better than if you don't do that. Okay. I think that's everything I wanted to cover. So, um, yeah, I'll see you around. Peace.